We have found that as scientists, we develop models on series of hydrological processes, for example, extreme events. However, when we want to communicate these results with, with tables and graphs, we see that people cannot relate themselves to what we say. They cannot understand. My research group worked on developing the numerical tools, the simulation tools for predicting the flow in hydro systems, for example, rivers, lakes, coastal areas, and also for transport phenomena like transport of sediments, transport of contaminants, water quality, transport of ice in cold region rivers. This device that uh, we have here is an application, is visualization of the, the models. The user can manipulate the surface of the sand to represent the different topographic features. We have a reservoir here filled with the water. We can create a dam here and after that, for example, we can break the dam to see the flood direction and the flood mass. It will give the decision makers and the scientists a general idea how the, the solution going to look. After that, we will use our accurate model to, to simulate the same phenomena with accurate data and accurate results. We can use this tool as a platform for communication. For example, we can have uh, people with minimal or no background in hydrology and hydraulics. So people can start talking. What is the impact of moving, for example, different parts of the city to another place? And then based on that, we can build up explaining that, yes, in the future, we will see the changes. The changes might not be like next year or the year after, but they are gonna happen. The impact of climate change in Canada is huge and uh, we need to take action. So I think uh, the way that we communicate scientific data should be changed in a way that people can relate themselves, engaging them in representing the reality. It is important to protect our land and to improve land coverage and land use in an area.